You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hello, my lovely friends. Well, last time we talked about focusing your distance learning approach so that you can streamline the process and not get yourself too overwhelmed. Today, we're going to discuss some ideas for teaching distance learning or remote learning style to your students. I'm going to provide a lot of ideas and then you can decide what might work for you or take some ideas and tweak them for your own classroom. Every classroom and group of students is different, so make it work for you. All right, let's get started. Well, before we begin, when I mean distance learning, I mean anyone who is teaching distance learning or teaching their students remotely or is teaching students in hybrid model where at times you're also instructing remotely. Distance learning is a form of online teaching where students and teachers are separate. Teachers are facilitating student learning over the internet and students are engaging with it at scheduled times or independently. And for art teachers, this can present a lot of challenges as your art mediums are now very limited compared to what you were using before. In most instances, your classroom is like gone. So. Your amazing setup, your sink, cupboard full of supplies, table caddies, pre-prepared. Well, it's all gone. As well, a lot of art projects can't be done the same over the internet. Ceramics is a topic that is a challenge to teach when you're not seeing your students in person. So, where to start? First, make sure that you explore if you don't know. So if you've never created a digital worksheet before, I suggest exploring Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint and just play around with them. You can change the page layout or dimensions to eight and a half by 11. In PowerPoint, this is under design, then slide size. And if you're using Google Slide, this is under file. And then at the bottom, you can click page setup. It is important to play around and experiment so you have exposure to these programs. There is nothing more frustrating than suddenly having to create art resources in a new way and not knowing how to do so. If you're wanting to save time or get pre-made digital art lessons, you can always search, try searching TPT for digital art lessons. As well, I have pre-made digital art lessons available in my TPT store or for members of the Artastic Collective, which is my art teacher membership site that provides an art resource library that is ever growing to the member. Um, You can find it there. And I'll put a link to that in the description of this podcast so that you may easily find digital art lessons in my store. Of course, I have things like Elements and Principles, and I have um, seasonal ones, so did back to school and then I did Halloween and autumn and then I'll do all the different seasons and holidays for you because I need to help you make this year less frustrating. (laughs) So I have created Google Slides resources that give art lessons on the elements and principles um, and themes again such as back to school, Thanksgiving, all that. It's my newest line so expect it to grow over the next months. All right, let's talk about art teachers who are teaching over Zoom or Skype or Microsoft Teams or whatever video conferencing tool that you might be using. Be silly and fun. I know it is hard to be expressive when you're feeling like you're talking to yourself, especially when you're presenting a PowerPoint. Try to talk a lot with a lot of expression and move your body around. You can make a classroom mascot, which is essentially a stuffed animal. Um, My current (laughs) mascot this year, its name is Pixie because that's what the Beanie Boo tag says. But Pixie the Unicorn is like um, one of those sequence Beanie Boos. So we talk about, you know, I can sanitize her. (laughs) And then one of my kids made her a little teeny tiny unicorn mask and it's so cute. Oh yeah, so she's my pandemic corn. (laughs) But anyways, um, that's what I use. I always get a new Beanie Boo every year. But you do you, right? 
So if you want, you can also try hot gluing some art stuff on your set animal. <laughs> so like a hat, cardboard paint palette, maybe like an old paintbrush of yours. You can use it for something like Fun Fridays and every Friday your classroom mascot, whatever its name might be, joins in on Zoom or whatever video conferencing tool you use. You can change what it's doing or add paper speech bubbles and stick it to its face so it looks like it's talking. Think of it like an elf on the shelf, but like all year. Now, if you don't want to buy a mascot or do that, but you have pets at home and you're doing instruction online from home, definitely bring your pets onto your video conference on a fun day of the week, like Friday. This is a way for kids to make connections with you. It helps them helps ease them into the lesson and will make them want to participate because honestly, I know my kids love me, but my cats will win their attention over me any day. You can also use the mascot or pet for a drawing prompt. For your fun and silly Fridays, especially at the beginning of the year, this can be a community builder or icebreaker. And you can have the mascot sit in like front of the camera, put on a timer, and the kids can draw it with uh, their choice of medium. Or for a challenge, they can try and draw your screaming pet. Good luck with that one. <laughs> As well, try and build movement into the sessions. Invite kids to get up and stretch halfway through or think of art movement activities that relate to the lesson. Maybe they're painting paint, you know, with paintbrush arms and they're whirling them around as though they're painting the starry night. I don't know, you can think of something. Movement is good is my point. You can also use the whiteboard feature in Zoom for fun drawing activities and use it for drawing or playing games. Next is screen share, and I like that one. You can screen share anything. I like to have internet windows open or my PDFs or PowerPoints open on my computer before starting a Zoom meeting. And then when I click screen share, I can share different things like YouTube videos, PDFs, gallery websites, pictures of art. This way, you can carefully curate what the kids see instead of them freely exploring or getting YouTube ads or who knows what on an art gallery website, which is, for us, it's all wonderful, but might not be uh, as wonderful for kids because there's nudity. You know, those kinds of things. Uh, which, yeah, it's gonna most likely, likely feature some naked people somewhere and by accident a kid might notice it. And so yeah, if you do screen share, you're showing them basically what you're looking at and that way they won't get distracted and click something and then, oh, uh, you have a problem to deal with, right? Um, and it may or may not be okay, right? I think this is all dependent on your district or the age of your kids. So really it depends on your situation. So again, you do you, but this is a suggestion for how you can problem solve that. So like if you want them to see online galleries for having art conversations or art history lessons and compare and contrast artworks and or artists, for example, or if you want to show them parts of a PDF or show them a PowerPoint or a type of slideshow or a video, then this is a great tool to use. And of course, it's carefully curated and you can really streamline the focus through the exploration of it. Another tip is if you teach an age group that has trouble focusing, try changing things up. So for example, you can start with a YouTube video or a pre-recorded art demonstration that you made because of course you can screen share that and then you can have the kids get up, they, you can lead a stretch and then show them the mascot, then screen share, then you can go back and show them an artwork online or have kids draw or create or have kids then hold up the art assignment from last class and they can share and talk about their last week's art. Basically, the idea is to keep changing the screen around to keep them interested in what's going on, right? To keep them engaged, which is the same in class, isn't it? We talk in front, we go to the carpet, or we go to a different spot in the room, we go to tables to create, we're back over somewhere else for a demonstration, all of the above. For those who want to add 
extra flavor, you can create a set. Okay, to be honest, this one, well, it's just not me. And if I'm at home, I don't really like the idea of having my classroom in my house. But I have considered maybe making one for like Mizzartastic webinars or my YouTube channel on like a wall of my art studio so it stays to the theme of art, <laughs> right? So if you scroll through Instagram or like search distance learning or look on YouTube for YouTube videos of teaching with Zoom, you'll see a lot of teachers who have essentially made a set behind them. They put things up on the wall that are like visual posters. I know a lot in like general elementary, they have like those hundreds chart things or like days of the week and months of the year, whatever you have in like carpet corner. I clearly don't teach kindergarten. <laughs> Corner carpet time. I don't know what you want to call it. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. They got all them goodies up there. Uh, they put things on the wall that they like. So visual posters or backgrounds. You can make paintings and put those up. Um, calendar. That's what it is. Calendar meeting. Ah, yes. That's what the primaries have. Calendar. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to do this, but... If this is something you enjoy doing, it's an idea. I'm here to give you ideas and you can pick the things that you like for your life or teaching style. Now, let's talk about creating art demonstrations digitally. Now, before I do get on into that, I gotta take a pause because we're gonna talk a little bit about the Artastic Collective membership. Hey. Kathleen McGivern here, and I just wanted to pause this episode to let you know about my art teacher membership site because it's kind of a big deal and saving tons of art teachers a lot of money on art resources for their classroom. To better support art teachers, I created the Artastic Collective. With the Artastic Collective Art Resource Library membership for art teachers, my mission is to provide you with prepared art lessons, resources, and activities that will allow you to free up your time and live your life, whether that means traveling, pursuing your hobbies, or spending time with your family. It will provide you with fully planned art lessons and resources that cover standards and include assessments and rubrics that will be given to you monthly, and you will also have access to a library of previously released resources. You should be able to be an instructor or teacher and be able to have time to live your life. With this membership, you will receive teaching ideas, inspiration, and guidance to help you navigate and problem solve in your classroom or studio. This membership is intended for elementary and middle school teachers. Find my membership at artasticcollective.com. Now, back to the episode. So, talking about creating art demonstrations digitally. You can create art demonstrations by filming yourself with your camera above you and posting your video onto YouTube or uploading, uploading it to your online classroom. For YouTube, you can post as public, which is where anyone can just find your video by searching. Or you can select unlisted so no one finds it unless... They have the link. I like to use an arm that holds my camera. It clamps to my table and swings over my work area. And I found it on Amazon. Just search overhead filming stand and you'll find some stuff. You can also try using your document camera or use a tripod or monopod and have it straight out horizontally off a shelf or furniture piece that is taller than your workspace and then just anchor it down with something heavy like cat litter or a sandbag. If you're not comfortable with filming art lessons, you can also take a picture of each step in the art making process. Then you can put the picture of each step on a separate slide on either PowerPoint or Google Slides, and then you can show the steps in a Zoom meeting or post the presentation to your online classroom. You can also do a voiceover on PowerPoint and export it as a video. Finally, some ideas for lessons you can do for distance learning. You can also tr always try sending kids on art web quests for assignments. Web quests are inquiry-oriented 
uh, activities in which students get all the information from the web. You can explore galleries online with your students and this is great for the is a great way to show them art. You can give them direct links or show them galleries in screen share if you do something like Zoom meetings or Microsoft Teams or whatever. You can use YouTube for art history. There are lots of videos that teach art history on YouTube. So for instance, you can search things like Vincent van Gogh for kids to find a more kid-friendly version, but also always remember to pre-watch because uh, what is good for one school or classroom or what the YouTuber feels is kid-friendly might not be perfect for your situation. So always make sure that you pre-watch. Uh, you can also use YouTube to find art lessons for distance learning if you're feeling overwhelmed or needing uh, to take a break from filming yourself. So this is a great way to balance your life in this chaos. You can search Art for Kids and see what you find. And I've also created a YouTube channel, so simply search Ms. Artastic. And there you can find a lot of free direct directed drawings and art lessons, including lessons on the elements and principles that allow for flexible mediums to be used. You can also create digital sketchbooks. Yeah, man. So create a digital sketchbook on Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint. Just have blank slides and at the top or bottom of each slide, you can type in a sketchbook assignment or drawing prompt. Share this template with the kids. They will then create the sketchbook assignments on real paper. Take a picture of the assignment and then insert the picture onto their copy of the document. When it is full, they can share it back to you. Last, they can create found art sculptures with things around the house or recycled materials, or you can teach a lesson on Alexander Calder and have kids creating things like pipe cleaner flea circus elements, or they can make mobiles with elements they can create they create from recycled materials. Well, that's all. I'll see you in the next episode in a couple weeks where I talk about creating happiness in your art classroom. For all my art resources and links to everything in Artastic, Ma Artastic Nation, please make sure that you visit my blog at MsArtastic.com or just simply search Ms. Artastic on your favorite search engine and you will find everything Artastic Nation. See you next time.